104.5, the team, your home for New York sports. We now uh, we go to our friend John Mita Peral. We met him uh, when we had the open house event for the Arena Football League, and uh, he is a uh, voice of Boston College and a Boston morning show host in his time as well. Yeah, and, uh, you know, LeVac, that's all good. All right, let's get to the go. real stuff. Here comes Syrac- boy, yeah, John. Look that's out. right. Syracuse <laughs> and Boston College yesterday. What would have a victory meant for the BC Eagles if they could have upset the Orange? Well, it would have been huge. I don't think there's any underestimating that. Uh, we were calling it a swing game for both teams. I think many in Syracuse said that uh, if Syracuse had lost that game, that their season might have been over. I mean, that that it was the gloom and doom that you'd expect from the Syracuse fans. But from a BC standpoint, you know, it's been a bonus this year. They got three ACC wins. They knocked off Duke. That's been well documented, but it kind of just showed BC they still have a long way to go, especially on the defensive end. Syracuse shot lights out 60%. Eagles could not handle them on that end of the floor, and that's where the game collapsed. This sounds like a simple question, but for me, I just need this answer. Is Syracuse good? <laughs> that's a uh, quite a probing question. <laughs> I think they are good. I don't think they're great. I think they have a chance to be a tough out if they make the tournament because no one wants to play the 2-3 zone. You hear it every year. Um, they're definitely not dynamic. I think their backcourt is very good. I think Battle is terrific, and I think Frank Howard's one of the more improved players in the country. They need that complementary option from scoring. I think O'Shea Brissett has shown signs of doing it. It's similar to what BC has. BC has three really good scores, and outside of that, there's not much going on. And that was a key to the game last night with Pascal Chukwu and Marek Dolajai combining for 26 points. Now, if they get that type of production every night, they're going to be a tough out for anybody. Now, that's a very good answer. I can take that and defend myself with all the Syracuse haters here in Albany. Albany, We don't hate Syracuse. It's you. I'm starting to figure that out now. Right. Now, I know your buddies with Matt Park over there. I don't know if you've talked to him about this team and almost the the future of the program. Jim Boeheim's going to be around for a while. Is the further extension of Boeheim at Syracuse still beneficial for the overall program? I think it is. I mean, it's – I don't get why, you know, if you're 72 years old, you got all the money in the world – I mean, are you guys going to be still hosting a a sports talk show? (laughs) No, not unless it's on the beach. Yeah, I mean, you 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 guys are loaded. So, I mean, it it comes down to Bayheim, I guess, probably thinking, all right, I want to coach my son for the next four years. And that's the only reason why I could think he would want to stay. I mean, I know it feeds the soul, and it's well documented that a lot of coaches retire, and then, you know, you can go back to Bear Bryant and saying that, oh, much to live for, and yada, yada, yada. But I think it's the Buddy Bayheim thing. I think when Bayheim's son comes in, he'll coach coach him, and then see you later in, when he's 76. But it's, it's a good thing now because it's continuity. I think Mike Hopkins, they wouldn't have lost much. Uh, I think whoever comes in next, Clearly, probably, my guess would be a Syracuse grad. Uh, my guess would be to keep the same type of system. It's served them very well. So from a continuity standpoint, yeah, it helps them. John Mita Prell with us right now on 104.5 The Team. So, uh, John, you're the voice of Boston College football and hoops. You, you've got to have some insight on this Super Bowl as the New England Patriots take on the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, what are your initial thoughts when you, when you see this matchup? You know, I, I think everybody in New England is trying to reconcile the fact that I think a lot of people, when the Patriots lost three games, they were crying that this defense stinks, it sucks, it can't stop anybody, they can't stop the quarterback. Uh, they're very uh, very unathletic on the defensive side. They don't have any playmakers. But one thing about this defense, because, I mean, we can all talk about the offense all day, the defense has been so important because they've gotten so much better the last half of the season. And I look at Philadelphia, I say, all right, if Carson Wentz was the quarterback, I'm thinking it's a field goal game. I'm still not sold on Nick Foles. He had a, or Nick Foles, he had a terrific, terrific game against Minnesota. That was the, you know, it was a shooting star, I think, for him. I still think he's pretty much just a mediocre quarterback. That's why I think New England's going to win the game. I think the Patriots got to somehow figure out a way to turn the ball over. They haven't done that in the last five games, which is bizarre. I think Harrison has been a nice addition. He's given them what they needed. That guy has helped stop the edge uh, and uh, force runs inside, and he's done that. And I think, you know, I think they'll they'll come away with a victory because of number twelve and because of everybody else around him. Even if Gronk doesn't play, they got so many weapons. The backfield is unbelievable with Deion Lewis and James White, and these guys have been there, guys. You can't underestimate that either. The fact that the Patriots have been there before in Philadelphia is, you know, no one no one has left from that team thirteen years ago. That's going to be an unfamiliar dynamic for them. John, when you look at the reports of the rift between, you know, Kraft and Belichick and Brady, do you give that any weight at all? 
I give it a little weight, but you know, I, we knew it ten years ago. We knew it. You know, there was always rumblings that Brady didn't like Belichick, and Belichick's maybe concerned with a little too much meddling from Kraft. You can go back to Bill Parcells and Kraft for the meddling aspect, but I think they kind of all reconciled that. You know what? We're going to make this work. We might not love each other. We're not going to hang out. Maybe one quarterback coach in the years gone by, all the great teams. Um, did Aikman hang out with Jimmy Johnson? No. Did Bradshaw hang out with Chuck Knoll? No. Did Bill Walsh hang out with Joe Montana? No. I mean, it's just a, a litany of a, 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 a roster of quarterbacks who don't necessarily get on with the coach, but they're, he's a good coach and he's a great quarterback, so why not do what you can to make it work, right? Yeah, and you mentioned it almost lingered for close to 10 years, you believe. How have they been able to do that for 10 years? you think if it goes for five years, maybe that's tough, but a full decade of not getting along? Well, I, I, that's, a, that's a number I kind of just threw out there. It's, I don't know. It could be six. It could be seven. It could be four. It could be eight. You, you throw a number on it. I, I just don't think they've ever really you know, gotten along and had, had a fraternity brothers-like relationship. It's, it's not such a bad thing. I don't think anybody really gets along with Belichick in that building. I mean, it, it's, it, the players can tell you that they respect him, but they don't like him. I mean, there's a difference. You're not gonna, who's, if you're buddy-buddy with a coach, is that the kind of coach you want? I mean, you want a coach to have that lean, line of demarcation. So there's a clear role of power there, and everybody's intimidated, and everybody – Follows in lockstep, but look at Harris. It's a perfect example. He was a mess in Pittsburgh. He comes in here and he's, he doesn't want to. You know, he's, he's going to fall asleep in a meeting like he reportedly did in Pittsburgh. Heck no. <laughs> he wants to stay in lockstep, and they all do. And that's to Belichick's credit. He's done a phenomenal job. He again. I mean, you can't underestimate the job he does building the culture in New England. John Meaprow with us. John, uh, real quick, we'll ask you this question. We've been you know kicking it around to uh, to just about everybody asks. With seeing the stories this week, are the Philadelphia Eagles fans the worst fans in all sports? Oof. In all sports, uh, the old Red Sox fan would have said the Yankees. Uh, but I think they're close. I think they're close. I don't blame them, though, because, I mean, I don't know. You can blame them in terms of throwing beer at people and punching horses. But right. uh, I don't blame them the fact that they're so thirsty for a champion. I mean, again, we had the Red Sox example here for 100 years. And if Philadelphia beats the Patriots, that, that city will explode. I mean, I love their passion. I didn't like the fact when I was walking down the street in Jacksonville 13 years ago, they were yelling at me like I had anything to do with New England. Is it, you know, it, the, the, when you know it's bad when they yell at the uh, radio talk show hosts. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, even, even though they, they, they might think you have something to do with the Patriots, I have no idea. But you know what? God love them. They're passionate. They'll probably outnumber the Patriot fans. I'm sure they're, they're jacked up beyond belief. And I think it's going to be a really good game, guys. It wouldn't surprise me if it's a field goal game, but I do see the Patriots winning. All right, John, one more thing. Of course, uh, you are the uh, national television voice for the Arena Football League. We now know that the Albany team is the empire. Uh, How do you feel about that name? How do you feel about the organization so far? I think it's an unbelievable thing for your region, the capital region, and for Arena Football. I mean, I think the league is, uh, you know, at least taking a little hit lately because the uh, couple franchises aren't coming back, Tampa Bay and Cleveland. Uh, I think they're going to have to find their way there. But I know that they have very good ownership with those who are still there, including in Albany. I think there's a lot of commitment there from the local side for them to make the empire work. I love the name. I think it makes perfect sense. And, you know, I'm excited to go go to the Albany Arena and call a game this year and to see that passion they had, you know, 10 years ago when touchdown Eddie Brown was playing. I think it's still going to translate, as you guys would know much better than I would, I think that that region is thirsty for a professional franchise, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. We're we are we are thrilled. We're excited, and uh, you know that we'll be bothering you when you come to town. <laughs> <laughs> Any time, except you're buying dinner. But uh, Gaza's right. No, no, no. So <laughs> wait a second. No, he said you. Thank you, John, for your time. Appreciate John, it. John, you're proud, man. We really appreciate you, and uh, we uh, we look forward to when you come to town for the uh, Empire. It's going to be a lot of fun, guys. Thanks so much.